so we, we had these people over right and i don't know if you if you guys have that but my aunt has this where she'll feed the guys first oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah of course yeah so i'm not used to that so i just grabbed the plate and started pouring my food right <laughs> <laughs> she literally stops it was just absurd because i'm like okay then and then my uncle was getting up to get water so i'm like hey can you get me water too Right? Oh. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I did. And it was the worst thing because she's just like, Myra, get up and get water for yourself and him. <laughs> I have a question. Um, mm-hmm. How many eggs do you have? Me? Yeah. <laughs> You're on the record. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting recorded. Um, I'll tell you when my VC was out. <laughs> Recording. <laughs> okay, well, welcome everybody. This is Red, also known as Habib. We're back to doing another episode of this podcast, and today's topic is really important, and that's why we got a lot of people on this one. The topic is a simple question, which is, what is the perfect age to get married for Pakistanis? There's probably no real answer to this. We know it's very subjective. It varies from person to person, and that's why we have five people on the line today, and we try to make this group as diverse as possible. So we have three guys, including me, and then two girls. So of the three guys, two of us are married. Shah Rukh is joining us. He's been married for quite a while. And then I recently married this year. So maybe I can throw in my two cents. And then we also have Hassan returning from the previous two episodes. And he's not married, as we all know. And then we have two ladies joining us today. One is Myra from the previous episode. She talked about depression. So she's returning to share her insight on marriage. And then we also have a brand new guest by the name of Maha. And she's based in Canada. I think to start off, it'll be a good idea to introduce our two new guests. So Shah Rukh Bhai, maybe you want to go first, talk about how old are you, how long you've been married, and uh, where you live. Okay, so my name is Shah Rukh Malik, and I am 29 years old, and I am basically from Lahore, but I'm living in Islamabad right now. So ever since I was born, my parents have moved from city to city, so I've, I've lived in a lot of cities in Pakistan, started ranging from very small cities like Kotidu, to Lahore, mm-hmm. to Rawal Pindi, and then Islamabad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, by profession, I'm a chartered accountant, but I've also been passionate. Uh, I have always been passionate about technology, so I have I have kept that passion alive. So I'm also into you know software development and things like that. Uh, so with regards to marriage, I got married in 2014, and uh, in 2014 we basically had our nikah, and the rukhsati was uh, one year later, which was in 2015. Mm. And the reason for this was that my brother, which is uh, who is two and a half years older than me, he got married after me. So I got married before him. Uh, so basically my nikah was in 2014 and then his nikah was after me in 2014 and then his rukhsati was in 2014. And then in 2015 March, uh, I had my rukhsati. So sure. that's how I got married. And yeah. I've known my wife since 2007, December 14th, 2007 to be exact. And uh, How did you guys meet? Uh, so actually, we were class fellows. Uh, there was a day when we had to present something to our uh, CA class. So mm. I'm doing CA, and you know, my wife has already completed. She's way ahead of me. Anyway, so, so, uh, so was it love marriage then? Yes, it was. Great. Yeah. So basically, uh, it was a presentation day at our college, and uh, we were waiting for our teacher to come, and uh, there was nothing to do. So some people started playing Minesweeper on the projector. And no one actually knew how to play Minesweeper except for uh, my wife, Hannah. She wasn't my wife then, but you know, that's when I knew that this is the girl that I want, right? Because she knows how to play Minesweeper. <laughs> so, hey, so, great. Yeah. Sounds good. Hey guys, um, my name is Maha. Um, I was born in Karachi, Pakistan, and I grew up in Canada. Yeah, I just finished my course uh, in supply chain management. And currently, I'm in Pakistan right now on vacation and planning on studying a little bit more after I leave. Um, I'm 22. Yeah. Great. 
Awesome. Um, I guess before we get started, I can share a little bit about my perspective. I recently got married this year in March, so it's been about six months. I actually met my wife online and uh, we hit it off pretty quickly and our parents were involved. So it was traditional, but at the same time, it was modern. When people ask me, were you arranged or did you go through love marriage? I don't know what to answer. I think it's somewhere in between because we made the decision, but we met online. I think for me, when I was going to college, my parents kept pressuring me as well just to get married. And I had told them, I don't want to get married until I'm 30. And uh, they would freak out, but I felt like that was the right decision at the time. Now, of course, I got married younger than 30, and there's a reason for that. One day I woke up and it was my birthday and I was 26 years old. And I think I had a, I had a quarter life crisis. I was like, okay, now I'm rounding up to 30. I think maybe it's time to become responsible and do the whole uh, marriage thing too. So I started looking. It took a while. It takes time to find somebody. So I, I wanted to make sure that I find someone myself and my parents were supportive of that. And yeah, it took about two, three years to find the right person. And then I went ahead and tied the knot. That's awesome. Great. So yeah, this topic is... There's a lot of pressure from within Desi culture, not just from our parents, but our aunties and uncles and friends. But the first thing that we just want to discuss is why does Desi culture, specifically Pakistani culture in this case, want people to get married at such a young age, especially for women, for girls? Uh, we don't see this happening as much, but it still, it still occurs. There's still a lot of pressure to get married young. And why is that? Maybe uh, Myra, you can take the first stab at this question. Okay, um, I personally think it has to do with a lot of things. One being, we have this long traditional history of putting marriage at a really high stand in the community. So if you're not married by a certain age, you're not going to progress. I feel like that's what the mindset is. But I think the reason why a lot of girls are more pressured into marriage, or like from what I see, it's because especially in the in North America because we're used to so many different cultures and so many different types of people. I feel like parents are almost scared that if we don't get married by a young age, we're going to get influenced by other things. So it also has to do with this respect, I guess, if that makes sense. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like a, if I don't get married by 22, 23, I might find someone that, that's not the same religion as me or, or the same culture as me because I'm exposed to those things. Like I've noticed that a lot, the, that parents have this fear of making sure that you find someone within your community and the younger you are, the less exposed you are to other mm. communities. So it's kind of like, okay, let's get them married off before they find someone. Yeah. At least uh, that's what I personally think. And also um, because they have this mindset that you are gonna grow with this person mm -hmm. and of course, the ideal age for kids mostly is late 20s, so they want you to find someone by your early 20s. I mean, I've had, like, this aunt. You know how we all have those aunties that care more about your life than you do? <laughs> we, like, we both have. <laughs> yeah, like, the ones that know everything about you, and you're like, how do you know this? Like, is there, like, a database that they all share information on? Because I think they do. Mm -hmm. So she came to our house one day, and so I'm personally not someone, I like, I'm not against marriage, but I'm not for it when it comes to me. I don't mm -hmm. see the reason to get married just for the heck of it, right? So I voice that, not aggressively, but I just voice that. And she goes to my mom and she's like, you better find someone for her be before she brings a white guy home. Mm. And I'm thinking like, oh, okay, so this is how you, it works for you. It's kind of like, okay, so if I don't want to get married you have to pressure me into it so i don't find someone outside of my own culture mm -hmm. or religion mm -hmm. so i think, I think I that's where the that. pressure mm -hmm. i think i was checking that because you know the major concern of the parents are that you know, let's get this uh, guy or girl married before you know he finds a boyfriend girlfriend that he right. gets too involved in and then you know it's hard for them to break up so let's put them in a permanent bond that they can't you know say no to later on exactly because the thing with like they want you to get married but to someone that they will accept so i feel like that's where the pressure comes from because they think that you don't have the capacity to decide for yourself who's good for you and who's not exactly. and you know it works uh, they're, they're right in many cases but you know not in every case so they right. should at least consider your choice so because there's this fear uh because there's like a certain set of things they have to do 
to mm -hmm. be respectable or at least that's what they think so that's why they start pressuring you at a young age to make sure uh you make them look good almost right yeah. so uh, Shahrukh, uh what are your opinions on this what do you think um so i think that you should marry when you feel like it so parents should have a say about who to marry but not when to marry so yeah. i think uh who to marry is should be the more important part rather than, rather than when to marry. The mm -hmm. when to marry part should be left to the person, and who to marry maybe you know sometimes be decided by the parents because you know of course they have had more experience, they can judge a person better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me do a quick pop quiz. Um, so this is just a simple yes no question. Everybody can answer this. Do you think your parents should be able to recommend who to get married to as long as there is no force involved? Would you accept help from your parents? No. Yes. To find the right partner. So, Sharon, you have... said yes. Uh, Myra? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, Hassan? I'm going to go with no as well. No. Yes, no. Okay. What about Maha? Uh, I would say yes. Okay. Yeah. Mixed bag. Uh, for me, it's a yes as well. And I guess just answering on behalf of the people who said yes, it might just be we are open, right? As long as there's no yeah. pressure involved, there's no force involved. We could use help. Who knows? That might be the right person, whoever our parents bring to the table. What about yeah. uh, whoever said no? Maybe, Myra, you can answer that. So the reason I personally think it's a no is because oftentimes the people that our parents recommend, the reason they recommend them has to do with the fact that they're the same religion as you or the same culture as you or they have a good job. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't define a person's personality or how compatible they are with you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. although they come from a place of love, right? Like they're doing it because they care about you or they think they know what's best for you. I don't think they look for the right things when they're looking for someone. So uh, just to clarify, you don't think that religion or culture should be a factor, right? In terms of looking for the right partner? Not the way I've been brought up, no. Okay. Are your parents okay with that? Um, my mom is, yes. Okay. I think she'll just be happy if I ever get married. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. I mean, okay. the thing is, I do understand why if you're, if you're the same religion or culture, it's easier. But I feel like you limit yourself so much. Mm -hmm. Especially, yeah, especially so outside of Pakistan. You're right. Right. Uh, Maha, do you want to take a stab at this question? Why would you want to wait longer to get married? Um, well, like you mentioned, um, I guess getting your shit together. Like getting your yeah. life together <laughs> before you like walk into something. So... It's, it's a big deal, you know, like to get married, like you need to get your head straight before you go into something, into a commitment like that. Even me, when I think about it, I think I want to wait longer before I get married to get my emotions in place, to be able to handle that kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. I guess, I guess that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I would echo that. I think it made sense when I was younger, probably around your age, I had the same argument, just saying, I need to focus on my career. It's not fair to just come right out of college and undertake such a big responsibility, right? So you want to establish yourself, stand on your feet, make sure that you can support yourself first before you learn to support somebody else. So uh, I would like, I'd like to add something. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, like people say that they have to you know, get settled before they get married, right? But I think mm -hmm. that's in, uh, in the culture that we used to have. Uh, where only the guys used to work and, you know, the girl didn't. But I think in the new culture where them are working, uh, don't you think they can support each other at an earlier stage? Because, you know, let's say there's a guy who's earning, uh, let's say, 20,000 rupees a month right, at his very early <laughs> age. Uh, so he can support the family with that. He and his wife can earn, you know, 40,000 per month. I think they can start a family at least. Maybe don't have kids and all that. But don't you think it's mm. easier for them to, you know, go through their twenties and have more financial, you know, more finances, and also an emotional support? I, I agree with that. I think, um, I, I think there's no point in your life where you'd be able to say, "Yeah, I'm ready now to get married." I think that pressure is so. I don't know. Like for me, I don't feel like I'd ever be able to get married. Like, be ready <laughs> to be able to get married. Mm -hmm. I still mm -hmm. have this doubt in my heart where, like. I don't know, there's this, there's that, you know, there's a, a thousand things pop up. So talking financially, I think it's doable to be able to get married earlier. And uh, I think it's, a, it's about how mature you are financially and how you handle things. And if you both work together, I think it's doable. Yeah, but, but then again, this is when you actually like your spouse. So if you aren't in a good relation at the early stage, then it can be a hassle. That's also a very important factor that you need to know the person. They're going to be living with you. No, like someone back home. Pick it yeah, up. you'd be able. 
Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of a risk that that can go both ways, but so that's why you know people don't want to take the risk very early on. They think that they already have all, too much on their plate. So um, there's a quick question coming up, in my, and I'm going to ask Sharubai to answer it. So you, you come from martial arts, religious family, and stuff like that. So um, your wife is still working, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So how did your parents uh, react to the decision? of uh, your wife actually being working. I know that according to religion and Islam that your uh, women are allowed to work, but the, the stigma and, and the, the, the Pakistani, typical Pakistani culture, women are not mm. usually allowed to work. So how did your parents uh, react to this decision? Uh, so actually they were okay with it. Uh, the only thing that this, uh, you know, didn't like was when, you know, when we would work late at night and, you know, we were in separate offices. And that really happens. Shark, can I ask you a personal question? Sure, sure, go ahead. Um, okay, so what if your parents were against her working like late or working at all? Would you still be supportive of her working? Would you allow um, it? Yes, yes uh, but we will, we will find ways that she could work and my parents won't be you know, affected. So, for example, we can work from home. So, actually, she's working right now behind my back. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so you know there are ways to you know make everyone happy and still get your way but it's not always easy so okay but i, I can understand where the question is coming from because you know many, i know many people who had this issue after their marriage they weren't allowed to work and they actually got divorced because of that because the woman especially wanted that you know now she's done so much in Study spent so much of the of her parents' money in studies, so she should at least have a payback and you know help her parents out at, at an older age. So yeah, that is an issue in Pakistan, but you know, gladly that hasn't been the issue with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's also important here to uh, state one point for men specifically. There's a challenge here as well, due to the culture that we have, which is sometimes very patriarchal. Right, like there's just a lot of uh, responsibility laid down on the man to support the house, which isn't necessarily the right solution. There's also a lot of pressure on the man to solve a lot of the problems and conflicts between the parents and the wife. Um, so if you don't listen to your parents, that's disrespectful. And if you uh, don't listen to the wife, then that's just bad marriage. That's you a know, bad situation. Speaking, it's a very difficult situation. Now, thankfully, personally speaking, I have... Uh, uh, my parents are really good about this. There's no force involved in our marriage, so it works out really well. But I know many people who have this challenge. And unfortunately, it's usually up to the guy to kind of um, manage these two very delicate relationships because we are basically at the center of uh, a clash between two different generations, right? Our parents from a different generation and then we're from a different generation where women are more empowered to step out there and uh, help carry the house financially as well as emotionally. And that's not a bad thing in our uh, modern thinking. Do you guys agree to that? I would, for sure. Like, that's why I'm a firm believer in the fact that your spouse should have their own relationship with your family. So, like, yes, you can be the middleman, but... If my sister gets married to someone, right, like they're going to be a really important part of her life. So I should be friends with that. Like I should have a relationship with that person that is irrespective to my sister. So like they're my brother-in-law, right? Or like let's say with my mom, like that's going to be their mother-in-law. So if, so if they have a relationship with that person, like a personal relationship, then it's much easier to let go of these differences. So I feel like oftentimes when the husband is the middleman between his mom and his wife, the communication can be weird. So it's like they should have a relationship without the husband because they, they, they do have a connection, right, at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Uh, yeah, you're, ex you're absolutely not right about that because you know, whenever my wife has to be alone with my mother-in-law, she can you know, get very nervous. <laughs> so right. That's because of this. Yeah, that's because of this because, you know, she's used to uh, being me around and, you know, always having me go with her uh, when, uh, when she, she has to talk to my mother-in-law. So you're right, actually. So fun fact, my aunt um, is Christian, the one that got married to my uncle. And um, my grandma wasn't okay with it for the longest time. But gradually, they built their own relationship. So um, it's almost like a, she couldn't hate someone that she knew. So it's like, okay, now I know how this person works. Now I know how they are. And she would hang out with her more than she would my uncle after a point. 
So I feel like that that's where my mindset comes from. Hmm. Oh, you're right, actually. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Okay. Hey, uh, guys, so let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next topic, because I think this is really interesting. Let's flip the table a little bit and play a potentially devil's advocate. So some people say the getting married younger is wasting your 20s. Is that really true? Let's fight against that that argument. So maybe, Myra, you can take the first stab at this and then Shah Rukh. Sure. So I don't think it is true if you do find someone or personally, if I was someone who wanted to get married, I would do it in my 20s. Mm-hmm. Only because I feel like the younger you are, the more adaptable you are to different situations. But as you grow older, you're more strong in how you are, which is why like um, our childhood friends right end up being our closest friends because we've grown up with them hmm. and because we're kind of used to them in our life so if i find someone when i'm 22 um they're gonna become a part of my life so by the time i'm 30 they're already a part of my life if that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah because yeah, they've gone through uh because in your 20s you're finding yourself right like mm-hmm. you're finding what you like like eat even in terms of career or in terms of your personality, that's really when you become an adult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So finding somebody, is it necessarily a bad thing to find yourself with a partner versus finding yourself so. as a single person? I personally don't think so, if that works for you. Even in Western culture, people don't necessarily get married young, but they do. Uh, dating is a really big thing here, right? So they do oh, yeah, yeah. oftentimes have a partner with them that kind of sh- helps shape their 20s. By the time they get married, they might have gone through multiple partners, but through their 20s, they might have had uh, probably a partner with them for a majority of the time that kind of helped shape up their their growth. That's actually really true because um, so if you do want to get married, I I would want to get married to the person that I grew with instead of like mm-hmm. growing with someone and then breaking up and then finding someone. Because yeah. I feel like you're a different person then. Or like you're a more refined version of yourself once you figure out what you want. Yes, so uh, I think it depends a lot on the person uh, that we're talking about. Uh, so for some people that, you know, they're mature enough to, you know, really understand what marriage is. I think for them, uh, getting married at an early stage is okay. Because, um, you know, when you're young and you're like, uh, we said that we're finding ourselves. So... If you connect with the wrong person and, you know, and you end up marrying, marry, marrying them and then you, you know, kind of drift away from what you wanted to be and what you are because you're married. So that can be harmful to, to you because then you're becoming what the other person wanted you to be, not who you wanted you to be. But then again, if you are mature enough and, you know, you can actually, uh, like Myra said, that you can actually help him and you, yourself to, you know, find uh, each other together. So you're basically not finding yourself, but you're also finding the other guy. So that's helpful. So I think it depends a lot on the person. In terms of wasting your 20s, I don't think that's true because, uh, you know, it's uh, the 20s is just an era you're passing through, right? So you don't want to do it alone. You don't want to do it with someone that you don't like. So as long as you're married, married to someone you like, it's a good thing if you're in a relationship, whether or not you're married. So it's not about... Um, you know, marriage is itself, but you know about the partner that you have. So marriage is just you know something that strengthens the bond. Mm-hmm. I think, rather than you know being the core factor for marriage. That's actually so true, and I also think no matter what decision you make, right, whether you choose to do that in your twenties, it's always going to be a gamble that you have to be willing to take. Right. So I guess when you're in your early twenties, the stakes could be higher because you haven't found yourself yet and you don't want to find yourself with the wrong person so maybe a lot of people that think that they wasted their 20s they took a gamble and it didn't work out gambling's haram i just mean gambling mentally <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 makes sense could have a, could have a fatwa on that gamble code i know that's what i was like let me mention <laughs> i mean <laughs> mentally <laughs> <laughs> yeah makes sense hey uh maha what do you think about this topic so are there any repercussions to not getting married early? Is it really a bad thing to get married or young if you think you found the right person? Or uh, should you always wait? What do you think? I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. I, I feel like when you're younger, I feel like you're going through a lot. Like that age, 21, 22, 23, is that age where you're kind of exploring yourself in a way. You're figuring out yourself more. 
and if you're not sure what you want at that time then you can make like a terrible mistake you can be with someone that you might not want to be with and you might not be sure because that's what you think you want but that's not what you actually want so i feel like you, I, I i feel like you need to give yourself a little bit more time to grow up a little to be able to say yeah i you know this is something that i want I don't know. Uh, there's a stigma in our Pakistani culture where getting married late is it's especially for girls. It's like you know, it's like a a toba. It's like a nana. Like you, you can't do that. That's that's bad. It's like for girls when she's when she's turned when she's hit twenty two, twenty three. It's time. Like right now. Like for me, I, I was coming to Pakistan and my mom was like, she started putting in my ear. She's like, you know, like. I'm going to go to Pakistan. I'm getting you engaged. You're getting married. You're it's your age now. And I'm mm-hmm. like, like what? Like and I think to Pakistan <laughs> and wild. People, same same question, when are you getting married? And like age ho gayi hai tumhari ab. Ab kar leni chahiye, you know? And when women like when girls are growing older, as as they grow older, it's it's like, oh, who's going to marry you now? You know, like you're in your 30s. I know a few ladies who are like past a little bit past 30s mid 30s and they're not married and and to be honest like lots of people reject you because of your age and what's in the community and the culture so of like 30 and you know I'm, you're getting old like no one really wants to marry you i i guess nowadays it's a little bit different but like in most of the cases that's what i've seen age is mm-hmm. a huge factor or it's almost like um if you're a woman and you're 30s and you're not married that means there was something wrong with you and that's like yeah. i've heard that lots of times it's like i wonder what's wrong with her or like yeah, she must like have everyone, a problem like so many people have rejected her like there must be a reason and there is no reason right it's, no it's the mentality they have and it's so wrong and that's more with right. girls than it is with guys with men yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, for men in Desi culture, uh, generally speaking, it's still okay to get married in your 30s, right? Oh yeah, for that. sure. Um, but for women it's a big no. Okay, so I have I have some data over here. So it's it's a popular practice now. I'm, I'm not sure if it's popular in in the West. It it's a common practice for really young girls to get married to guys who are like in their 30s, 31, 32 and the girls like 19 or 20. So what is there any psychological or a uh, biological reason behind it or is it just uh, just you know what their for ancestors ancestors have been doing it so that they, they've been doing it as well so yeah it's a question from uh, Sharf bhai specifically as well um i think it's more more of a culture thing so you know i think people are used to you know just do what their their parents did it's easier for them to follow their footsteps than to you know have a reason for what they want to do and it's easier to explain to the family as well so when you know when the girl is really young and the guy is older so one reason is that and the other is that they, the parents want uh, you know their daughters to get married to a rich uh, family and you know a well settled family who has a lot of things going on so i think that's uh, another reason why this could happen but i don't see that uh, happen often in pakistan so i see that um or I've heard that a lot when a guy is getting re married he'll marry someone much younger. I don't know if you guys have noticed that too. Yeah, I've heard that. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. True. Yeah. I think it has to do it's more of a fetish thing to be honest. Like, <laughs> that's kind of that's true. <laughs> And I think uh more about control. Is, right? so you're at 30s. So you you find someone who's 20s, you can easily control them. Maybe like uh, you you put the Yeah, that's also true. The most blunt statement out there oh i'm older than you i know more but like the most biggest statement yes actually i agree with that so many of my friends actually think that way so they think that you know when their wife is younger it's easy for them to not dominate them and thing like that but you know um i had a friend that said that your wife should always be older than you because then she's more mature and it's easier to have a conversation mm-hmm. with them so you know it goes both way but uh, you're right more people are like that that they want to dominate their wife and so that's why they think that you know if she's younger and by a large number of years it's easier for them to be in the you know controlling portion of in the family but um that's so sad my, yeah, i know my wife is actually older, older than me so that's the opposite with it wow yeah, yeah there's a <laughs> there's a uh, okay cupid 
uh, dating company. So they obviously collect data around dating preferences, right? Because it's a dating company, um, kind of like match.com. And what they found is incredible. They found that girls, women prefer in, in terms of age preference, they choose men to be just about two or three years older than them, no matter what their age is. So a 21 year old girl typically wants a 23 to 24 year old guy um, as a dating partner. But then men consistently want a 21 to 22 year old, no matter what their age is. And the study goes as far as like age oh 50 for men. Oh so it's, it's incredible. Yeah, men are static. So basically men are totally <laughs> And this is a Western world. So keep that in mind. This is oh not a Desi, uh, an analysis of Desi culture or people. So it's a, it's a global uh, mindset. Honestly, yeah, though, but that, like the bigger the age difference gets, right? At least for me and what I've seen, um, it becomes more from like you wanting to find a partner so like so there's a reason that these two people are together that doesn't have to do with the fact that they like each other so if like yeah, like true. how sharp by said that um they might want a richer guy and older men are more rich right so the woman will never have to work but that doesn't mean that she likes him or that he likes the girl because to be honest if you're 50 and you're with someone 21 what's the common ground there <laughs> so it's crazy so um, I think for some people, marriage isn't about you know relation at all. So I think uh, in many relations, I've seen that you know, the husband and the wife are looking, living their own lives, but you know they're just married and they live in the same house. So it's like having a neighbor that you know you're related to. But mm -hmm. uh, so even though they're married, they have their own lives because you know someone who's twenty will be you know into Snapchat and Facebook and things like that, and something someone who is fifty, I don't think he will even you know open their email. So, yeah, this I think it's very short term. Maybe, maybe <laughs> the guy dies. I think very soon after that. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs> yeah, and the girl then inherits all his bitches, and you know. You yeah. just described <laughs> half of Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> <There's>, um, <laughs> I think it's really. Um, it's, it's really famous on the internet. Um, sometimes you might even see on Pakistan news channels that someone around the age of 25 marries a guy who's 60, he's going to die in the next 10 years, and the money is all there. Is it? Yeah, I think, I think that's the story behind Trump as well. But you know, he's somehow not dying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Great. So I think, um, let's see if we can agree to this. We seem to have a general consensus, which is point one, it's okay to get married young as long as you think you've found the right person yourself, right? And then point two, if you don't want to get married young, parents should be supportive of that and forced marriages are actually never a solution. Would you guys agree to that, to those two points? Yes, hands down. Absolutely, uh, with, without a doubt. Um, don't let the eyes deceive you. <laughs> Pick someone really carefully and don't, don't get forced, <laughs> first of all, because um, um, it's it's your life, your choice. Your parents are gonna live with you for twenty years, so that's um, pretty much bottom line for me. And and you don't have to be aggressive with your parents, you know. Um, in my case, I was never, you know, but threes with them. So <laughs> I always mentioned that, you know, this is something I want to do. If you want to be me to be happy, you want yourself to be happy. You you know, this is some... the amount of times I've heard guys are like, I'm not gonna eat for twenty days because you're not gonna get married. She's, she's like, oh, wow. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't have to do that. So, you know, I just proceeded in a logical manner. You know, I just mentioned that you know, this is something I want. I, if you don't do this, I will live my life as normal, but you know, I won't be happy. So, you won't be happy. So, if you want yourself to be happy, you should make me happy and I will be happy this way. So, that's adorable. Yeah, so, Sorry, yeah, but so you, you were one of the lucky ones. Yes, yes, I, I agree to that. You know, it's not uh, that easy for everyone. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, sounds like we got good advice from Hassan and Sharu. So uh, let's get some advice from uh, Maha and Myra. So Maha, what do you think? Well, how can anybody deal with their parents who are uh, struggling to get them married quickly and putting a lot of pressure on them? I think it's, um, it's on the individual to make it, like you need to take a stand and make it really clear that, you know, like even being forced, like, um, a small story, like, um, I came to Pakistan and I saw a few rishtas, and one of the rishtas, it was one of uh, my mom's friend's nephew, so we went to their house, and they're really kind and stuff, and the guy, he, like, 
everyone asked me, and the guy especially, like, he went to talk to me, and he asked me, he was like, listen, like, are you getting forced to get married? He asked me straight up in front of everyone, and he made it clear, like, to, in front of both of the families, like, because, like, I was kind of hesitant to go, so he thought I was being forced, and he was like, listen, like, are you getting forced? Are you being forced from your, is there any sort of pressure from your parents? I'm like, no, there isn't. And I think that's very important. If you can, like, state it in, mm-hmm. in front of both the parents, um, it will make both of your life much easier. Because, like, being forced into something and then having it not work out is much harder than it not working out in the beginning. So mm-hmm. I guess taking a stand is voicing out your your opinion. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got to say that that's a very bold guy. Hats off to I him. Know. He asked a good question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, so Myra, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I totally agree. I think you should always stand your ground and ha- explain your views to your parents. Because the thing is, right, if you, if, you, if you get pressured, right, and you get married, you have to live with that choice for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. essentially, right? Because you're going to be living with that person and so I feel like our parents aren't like we should treat them like our parents and have the right to explain hey this is why I don't want this and stand your ground like keep explaining it to them because sometimes like for me for example I had to explain it to my mom for a while but now she understands that it's just not something I want and she supports me through it so I think it's important to get your parents support in whatever choice you make and in in order to do that you have to struggle a bit to explain how you think and how you work but i think in the end they do understand because they are your parents and they do love you and they think they know what's best for you so Mm -hmm. sometimes you just have to be like maybe you do but maybe just not when it comes to this so you should always have explain yourself instead of giving it in my opinion I just want to add, like, um, standing your ground and, like, voicing your opinion, it can always be, it can be done in a respectful and, and there's appropriate way to do it. You don't always have to be, like, butt the knees and you don't have to be, like, fighting your way through it. It can be done. Oh, like, yeah, for sure. So just to, like, put it out there, put it out there. Mm. Yeah, great two point. Even Pakistani dramas are becoming more and more, uh, I think, modern and helping our parents uh, shape up and relate more to kids' mindset, right? Mm-hmm. So it's slowly changing out there. Yeah. And I think it's now confirmed that Red watches Pakistani dramas. <laughs> That's what I, 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 I don't really watch them, but I visit my parents' house and uh, yeah, it's they, they're always watching oh. something on home TV or ARY and yeah uh, you're lucky. we really need my to get some watches like the hundreds and game of thrones and all of those no way yes wait and i don't watch those <laughs> and you know what annoys me is why is every pakistani drama about sas bahu type relationships why can't they just make a game of thrones or something that has to do more with guys maybe something outside of the house That's whenever exactly they show what my mom says <laughs> whenever they That's show guys the inside pakki dramas there's always a suited up guy and he's always like in the center of a a huge conflict between his mom. <laughs> and his Not always. You're right. It's getting pretty well. Is it's it? doing good. I gotta start watching. I guess none of, Pak- <laughs> none of the Pakistani dramas are you know targeted targeted towards men. I think. Yeah, not, not so many. Right. Yeah, I can't think. Okay, of uh, hello, Home TV. If you're listening to us, we need drama. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> hello. Seriously. I was uh, gonna close out with one more pop quiz type question. So there's no perfect age to get married. It's subjective. It's up to you. But let's just throw out a number for each one of us. What do you think is the perfect age? Now, just throw something out. Whatever number comes to your mind first. So I'll start. Twenty-seven. Um, so twenty-five. For me, yeah, twenty-five for me as well. Mm-hmm. I think any time from twenty-five to thirty, if you want to get married. Yep. Awesome. 25 to 28, 29 years. Perfect. Perfect age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. Mid to Yeah. Cool. Guys, this was a great discussion. So thanks a lot. Uh, shukriya. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Until next time.